Well, Climate Change Minister Penny Wong will meet for one last time with her opposition negotiator, Shadow Minister Ian McFarlane, later today. But the opposition won't get the amended emissions trading scheme bill until tomorrow, after Federal Cabinet signs off on it. Penny Wong joins us now. Minister, welcome to breakfast. Good morning, Fran. Penny Wong, has the deal been done? Look, we're close to finalising the government's position on what we will put to the opposition. We've certainly done a lot of work with the opposition negotiators, Mr McFarlane and the others. Uh, So uh, we are nearing the end of this, obviously. The question will be whether or not what we put uh, is something that the opposition party room will support. So what have you still to nail down with the opposition when you meet with Ian McFarlane? Oh, Fran, as you know, I think you've asked me questions like that before. We're not going to uh, transact this in, in public. Uh, but Well, we... can you tell us this? How, how much of the opposition's amendments have you agreed to? Well, no, I can't tell you that because that would be telling you uh, the nature of uh, what's in the negotiations. What I can say is we've made a lot of progress. We have worked through uh, a lot of detail. Uh, there were many, many uh, requests or demands from the opposition on the table. Uh, We have worked through uh, the demands that the opposition put to us and we are very close to being able to put a final proposition from the government to the opposition. As I said, uh, then uh, the opposition party room will have to determine whether it's prepared to support those amendments and therefore support the bill. Has Ian McFarlane got most of what he sought? I think that's the same question as you previously asked me. He's he, he's uh, negotiated very effectively along with the uh, others who have represented the opposition. Uh, we also have, uh, obviously, uh, areas where uh, we have not been able to compromise. So uh, we have been very clear that for us, whilst the opposition may need to focus, as they have primarily on industry assistance and a- additional assistance on that side of the ledger, that we want this uh, ar- um, these amendments to reflect both sides of this discussion and both sides of these objectives, which is the environmental outcome as well. Some opposition MPs, and most latterly Tony Abbott, uh, say they need 100% of their amendments approved for the party room, for the coalition party room to support it. Now, you know that could be what it takes for Malcolm Turnbull to get through his party room. It seems as though they're not getting that, if there's some areas you've not been able to compromise on. Well, I don't think walking into a room for a negotiation demanding 100% of what you've put on the table is a good faith negotiation. And if that's what Tony Abbott is suggesting should have been done, then that clearly is not a proper negotiation. The uh, Some in the coalition are very critical of the fact they're not getting this uh, amended bill until tomorrow. Why the delay? Why not get the details to the opposition with as much time as you can to give them as much time to debate this to give you the best chance of getting it passed this week? Well, this was the timing which was agreed last week uh, with the opposition. Uh, obviously, uh, they have a view about how that should proceed and uh, uh, we are also quite prepared as the government to extend sitting hours and or sitting days at the end of this week uh, if that is what requ- is required for the opposition to have the time they need to consider this. What if you, I mean, there's no great heart for extending sitting hours. People say you could have brought this legislation back in September. It's just that you wanted to set up the conditions for a double dissolution election. What if you can't get this debate finished? by Thursday when and Parliament rises. Is well, the deal off? Well, Fran, this is a deal for this week. And our expectation is if there, if there is an agreement, uh, then the opposition would need to do uh, what is required in the Senate to finalise a vote this week. Uh, that is the government's expectation. As to timing, let's remember, when we put this legislation into the Parliament, it was budget week. Uh, Prior to that, we had put draft legislation in, but this legislation came into the Parliament in May. Uh, It was supposed to be voted on in June. The opposition then delayed and played procedural games to push it off till August. Uh, And we have now brought it back again. So uh, when people in the opposition who don't want to take action on climate change talk about delays, one should remember the context is they have imposed their own delays, and that is because there are a range of senators in the Liberal Party, who will do and say anything to avoid taking action on climate change. And all of their commentary and all of their comments should be taken uh, bearing this in mind. You mentioned that the Coalition came with some amendments for more industry assistance. Is there extra compensation for the electricity generators in this amended bill? Fran, I think you've asked me that. It's essentially the same question. I'm not going to go into details of what is being negotiated. That was certainly one of the things the opposition put on the table, a very significant increase uh, for electricity generators. That is public knowledge. That's obviously something we'll continue to discuss with them. 
Did the Greens have any luck? One of their suggestions was that householders' energy saving efforts get counted in our carbon emission reduction targets. Well, we're certainly keen to ensure this, uh, any amended bill, reflects both our environmental objective as well as our economic objectives. Uh, and we are certainly look keen to look at ways in which we can encourage Australian households to do their bit. And just finally, Minister, we heard on AM six leading scientists have written to you calling for 700,000 megalitres to be returned as environmental flow to the Murray immediately. Mm -hmm. Apparently your, your office, according to that report, has rejected that because it would mean Adelaide would get no water from the Murray. Well, Are we at the point now where we literally have to choose between saving the river or having access to drinking water? Regrettably, we are at the point uh, where water is extremely limited. Uh, what we know is that this report calls for an amount of water that is more than we have diverted for all use in the River Murray for six out of seven last years. So that would mean to get that amount, uh, you would have to not allocate water to any uh, to cities, to towns along the Murray, uh, or you would have to not, and you would have to not allocate water to irrigation. It uh, uh, would not be a responsible way forward. We have to manage all the various uses at this time responsibly. Uh, let's remember the government has purchased, uh, as at 30th of October, over 600 billion litres of water. That's come at a cost to taxpayers of close to a billion dollars. Uh, this is a difficult problem and one we are working to remedy, uh, but it certainly can't be fixed overnight and it certainly can't be fixed by assuming we're simply not going to allow any extraction whatsoever from the River Murray. Minister, thank you very much for joining us. Good to speak with you. Climate Change Minister Senator Penny Wong in our Parliament House studio.